Welcome back to the town that never sees a sunny day, or well, I mean, presumably some people have seen sunny days. James Sunderland has not for some time. He's not seen any sunny days in the three years since his wife died. Now, quite literally, he is in the town full of just ridiculous fog and monsters and weird dead ends. We have been trying to get to Rosewater Park. Remember over... No, that's actually not the map I want. That's over here? Like, we went all through all this, right? Trying to zoom in on it. Like, there we go. That We went through all that right there to get to Rosewater Park, which is underlined there. So many roads. All the roads blocked off. All the roads have huge gaps torn in them. So many walls. So many locked doors. So many monsters in the way. But... James's efforts are going to be rewarded because we have made it through the apartments. We are on the other side. And now there's actually nothing stopping him from reaching the park. And you might remember he's going there. Oh, hold on. You. It was you, wasn't it? You're the one who stepped on my hand. I don't know. Maybe I did. What's a little girl like you doing here, anyway? Huh? Are you blind or something? What's that letter? None of your business. You didn't love Mary anyway. Wait! How do you know Mary's name? That is a good question. How did she know Mary's name? The little girl in the first game, Cheryl, was uh, didn't really say anything. It was kind of quiet and mysterious. Well, let's take a little side stairs right here. Doesn't lead anywhere. It's just to a dead end. But uh, hey, you know, some ammo. Sure, handgun bullets. But in this game, the little girl is, uh, you know, she's pretty assertive. She's pretty loud. She does not like James, as we just saw. And somehow she knows about James and Mary. Oh, right. What are we doing? Where are we going? We're going to the park. And we've made it. Rosewater Park. This is that park. So James is looking for his dead wife. He's a bit confused. As he mentioned to Angela... Mary's dead. He knows that he won't find Mary here. But, you know... Maybe? He's trying to find the special place. He's thinking that it's probably the park. Caution. Slippery when wet or frosty. Fortunately, it is not wet or frosty here. Someone's left... Okay, someone's left some handgun bullets lying around in the park. As you do. So James is desperate to try to figure out who sent him the letter. Mary couldn't have. She's dead. But he's hoping. He's hoping. Here's a statue. Patrick Chester, son of Edward, he fought and died for the people, for liberty, and for all of our tomorrows. His memory lives on. Not very well. That statue doesn't have a head or arms, and the horse doesn't have a head. I don't think many people are going to remember what this guy looks like. James said that he and Mary would go to the park and look out over the lake and just spend some time there. It's a precious memory of his. He desperately hopes that he could do that again someday. But he knows it's ridiculous. Couldn't possibly be true. No fishing. Now, this is not for fishing. This, this park is for romance. To stare out over the lake. James remembers those good times. Well, this is the special place. And, against all odds, he finds someone here. Mary? No, you're not. 
Do I look like your girlfriend? No, my late wife. I can't believe it. You could be her twin. Your face, your voice, just your hair and clothes are different. My name is Maria. I don't look like a uh, ghost, do I? See? Feel how warm I am? You're really not Mary. I told you. I'm Maria. Sorry. I was confused. Where are you going? I'm looking for Mary. Have you seen her? Didn't you say she died? Oh yeah, three years ago. But I got a letter from her. She says she was waiting in our special place. And that's here? Anyway, I haven't seen her. Is this your only special place? Well, there's the hotel too, I guess. The one on the lake? I wonder if it's still there. The Lakeview Hotel? Yeah, it's still there. So, the hotel was your special place, huh? I'll bet it was. Don't get so mad. I was just joking. Anyway, it's not that way. It's this way. You're coming with me? You were gonna just leave me? No, but... With all these monsters around? No, I just... I'm all alone here. Everyone else is gone. I look like... Mary, don't I? You loved her, right? Huh, or maybe... You hated her. Don't be ridiculous. So it's okay? Yeah, fine. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. We're missing the most important part here. Soft pretzels. Oh man. I could go for a soft pretzel right now. Well, we have a companion. It's Maria. So, James said that she looks just like Mary, only she dresses differently. Yeah, it's pretty different. So, we found someone here at the special place that looks exactly like our dead wife and is has a very similar name to our dead wife. How weird. But it is not our dead wife. We still need to find her. So here we are at Rosewater Park, and James is now thinking that maybe the other special place uh, is over there. You see that circle, Lakeview Hotel? That's the other special place. It's kind of a walk. It's like a bit of a distance away. There's the lake between us. Right? If we could cross that lake, then we could probably get there. And if we look over here, there's a boat launch over by the Silent Hill Historical Society. Maybe that's some place that they could they could go over uh, get a boat, head over to that lake, cross it, get to the hotel. Maybe that could be. Let's have a look at another Silent Hill monument. In memory of the 67 who died of illness and now sleep beneath the lake. A lot of people died in this lake, apparently. So there is no, no swimming or diving allowed. It seems pretty shallow. Like, how could you dive into that? It doesn't see. I mean, that's why diving is not allowed. Maria is kind of slow. Like, if you run, she will fall behind. She'll always catch up to you, but she's pretty slow. Can't go here. See, look how far behind she goes. There's also another monument here we can look at. Might as well take a look at it while we're in the park. You know, we want to see everything. We want to explore. We want to have a good time while we're here in our vacation spot. 
our treasured vacation spot of Silent Hill. Victim of persecution by to ends, Jenny Carroll lived with pride and honor. What happened here shall never be forgotten, unless someone just wipes it out of the of the text. Behind this, there's like a there's like a mound of dirt. You can, I can't seem to interact with it, but it's there. Maybe we should remember that. Poor Jenny Carroll. Like I said, Silent Hill really does need to take better care of its monuments. As it is, I don't even know what happened to Jenny. Let me make sure I'm going the right... Yep, I'm heading south. That's where I want to go. Here's the parking lot. We don't have a car. That's not important. Here's a monster. That's not important. Oh, by the way, uh, Maria does have health. And shooting her would kill her. So, let's just remember, she can die. And if she dies, then we get a game over. So, you know, that's that's a little bit... That could be a little bit of a problem. Usually it's not so much. Um, the monsters tend to go after James more than directly after Maria. Hold on. Andy's Pizza, it's free delivery. You just dial 000, 000, and Andy will be coming. Oh, yeah. Andy will be there faster than you think. Bullets. I guess I don't have to fight them. There's so much space. We can just run around. Just looking at the little nooks and crannies. Finding the discarded health drinks and boxes of handgun bullets that the people of Silent Hill just, you know, tossed away and forgot about. As you do. Is there something written on that? Can't really see it. Um, that's like a, a drawing of a skull. But a, a gun to your head, gun in your hand, gun in your hand, a skull and gun in your hand. It says beneath it. Where am I? I'm going south. I don't really need to go this way. But hey, you know, want to check out the whole pl check out everywhere. Take a look around. Here's a big wall. This is where we came in? No, this is the other side of this wall. It's locked. Right, we, we were on the other side of this when we went into the apartments. Like, this was blocking us from getting to this side of the town, and that's why we had to go through the apartments. You know, while we're examining things and wandering around, I should probably mention a few things about how you get endings in this game. This game handles endings in a very strange way. Uh, hey, don't go after Maria. Hey. Don't do that. In Silent Hill 1, endings were handled in a very straightforward way. The ending you got would be based on uh, how you handled the fight with Sybil. It would be handled based on if you did the game's one and only side quest. So pretty straightforward. Silent Hill 2 does endings in a way that I can't think I've ever seen a game do before. In this case, it doesn't really matter when it comes to the normal endings, what you do. It's more about how you act, what your attitude is. For example, one thing that could affect the ending is if we keep looking at the picture of Mary. Because if I do that, it implies that James misses Mary. Ah, uh, Mary. And that's going to affect one ending I get. Another thing that could affect the ending I get is if I keep looking at Angela's knife. Because Angela appeared to be contemplating suicide with this knife. So what does it mean if James stares at it for a long time? That can affect our ending. You know what else can affect our ending? I can run at Maria and, like, bump her. Hold on. There we go. If I do that a bunch of times, it implies that James does not care about Maria's well-being. 
And that can affect the ending we get. I don't know how people figured this out. Like, you can just look it up in a walkthrough today, but when this game was new, how did people figure out all this stuff? Like, if you do this... No, I just did not bump her. Yeah, there we go, I bumped her. Like, that's going to add points to uh, to a certain ending. Who? How did that get figured out? There's no, there is a basketball net here, but I can't be sure because there is no basketball around. Uh, people leaving their first aid kits out. It's good for James. There's some other things that affect the endings that we can get. But those are just a few of the things that I wanted to mention. I think also the distance that we keep between James and Maria, I think that also comes into play. Like, if I keep a lot of distance between the two, then it, impli it again implies James doesn't care about Maria, so that's going to affect the ending we get. Okay, we're going back up towards Jackson. See, I'm supposed to be defending her from monsters, right? I'm not really right now. I'm just running and making her run past the monsters. And maybe that, maybe that implies that James does not care about Maria. Here's an inn. Strange thing about this inn. Jackson has, like, actually, like, a fully modeled in courtyard here. And you can walk around it. I don't think you can really interact with anything. It looks like you should be able to. Hold on. Maria, no backing in. Check this. Maria, I am such a rebel. Check. Are you impressed? Maria's very impressed. Like, I don't know why this is here. Like, maybe, the, I don't know if they intended to maybe do something with this. It seems like it should be, it seems like there should be something that happens there. There is nothing that happens. A doghouse. But I can't be sure. Well, I already used that joke with the basketball net. If I examined the doghouse, I would get something for a special ending. But that's not what we're doing here right now. Some other time, doghouse. Some other time. The dance company. Maria. We could learn about classic ballet, jazz, dance, and aerobics. If they were open, but like no one's really open right now. Air International. I guess if you want to leave Silent Hill, we could go to the travel agent. Dry cleaners. You don't need a brand. You just need to know that they will dry clean your clothes. Here's a car that's actually running. It's the only one that is. Not anymore, because I took the steel pipe out of it. Now I have a weapon. So it's an upgrade over my plank at the Texan station. Look at these low, low prices. There's something else over here. Th again, this has to do with a special ending, so we are not going to pick it up right now. All I know is that it's cool and it's custom. I don't think I can go in the station. Nah, pretty sure you cannot. It's like there's a neon. Sorry, Maria. There's a neon sign. It says it's open. I don't think it's open though. Let's see, wave and I can't see what the sign below it says. Where are we going? Okay, we could go to Pete's Bolorama and the Heaven's Night, but didn't we want to try to go to the boat launch? We could try. I'll tell you, we won't be able to. But you know, let's try. Actually, this is going south, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I just want to walk towards the historical society because there's some if you if we do that there's something that will probably happen that makes me very happy. So let's head on over to the historical society. That's the sign for it. Sign Hill Historical Society. Look at these people parking like right on the sidewalk here. Lakeside Amusement Park. If only we could go there. We cannot in this game. Oh, what's that say? Toluca Lake. Keep the nature. 
I like that load. I like that's a short and to the point. Lo yes. That's what I want to see. When we run down this path, like monsters, it's like someone, it's like just throwing monsters into the road. Your ad could be here. You could, you could be advertising in Silent Hill. I don't know if it's supposed to be frightening or what, but the animation is just like someone is hurling monsters into the road. Mm, could go for some quiet cocktails. All right, we made it to the boat launch. Oh no, hold on, let me pick this up. But would you look at this? No one could get past this. Sorry, Maria. There could be a boat over there that we could use to get to the hotel, but this is just impassable. This is an obstacle that neither of us combined could overcome. Boats to Lakeside Amusement Park and Lakeview Hotel. See, there's a boat to the hotel right past this fence. But, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, we cannot. No. Here's the Historical Society. Silent Hill Historical Society. Locked. The lock is not broken. The door is just locked. So, if we had a key, we could go inside. But we don't have that key. Now, another option, if we look at this map... Hold on. It says Nathan Avenue goes all the way around the lake to Sanford Street to the hotel. What if we just tried to follow that road? Like, it's a long... <laughs> it's a long run, but what happened? Giga computer. That's when, you, that's when you have some serious needs. Also, baby and kids superstore. I th hey, hold on. Are you attacking her? No, good. For a second, I thought that said baby ad kids, and I thought that doesn't really make any sense. But baby and kids makes a lot more sense. Hold on, hold on. Silent Hill fresh meats. That's good, because most of the meat that we see in Silent Hill seems pretty not... Someone just, yeah, someone just got thrown. Here's another sign for the Lakeview Hotel. Okay, here's a bridge. But unfortunately... Bridge is ruined. We can't get to the hotel from here. Sorry, Maria, but look at this. We can't... There's a huge chasm in the bridge. Can't get past. So we're just going to put, like, a red squiggly line right there. No choice but to go back. Of course, in Silent Hill, the obvious ways to get to your destination are always cut off. We could try going to the Heaven's Night. That was to the south. <laughs> I like to think maybe it's just Pyramid Head off screen who's just chucking these monsters. Uh, let's see. Pet Center Vaccine Clinic. I can't really... S oh, and also there's a sign for T's Italian Restaurant. So double, double, double ad on that billboard. There we go. Jackson, we uh, we tried going to Jackson. Nothing there for us. <laughs> Beads Bolarama, nine rod from here. What? Also, the Texan gas. We were there, of course. That's where we got our steel pipe. SHT. I think it says Silent Hill Tavern. It's a weird ad because it's just all blue with the logo in the lower right. It's kind of minimal. Oh, hold on, Maria. I know that you like being a rebel. Check this out. Uh? She's impressed. All right, I think we're at, yeah, we're at the Pete's Bolarama. Hold on, I'm looking at something. Got a health drink. All right. So, let's try going in here. I'll wait here. I hate bowling. 
I didn't come here to play, you know. Hurry back, okay? She refuses to go into the bowling alley. Well, it's locked. Fortunately, there is another door over here. So what'd you do? Robbery? Murder? Nah, nothing like that. Huh, you're just a gutless fatso. What'd you have to say that for? I thought you said the cops were out for you. No, I just ran because I was scared. I don't know what the cops are doing. But if you did something bad, why don't you just say you were sorry? Well, I guess I run away a lot too. It's no good. They wouldn't listen. Nobody will ever forgive me. Did you find the lady you're looking for? What's her name? Mary? And in the bowling alley, my favorite track in the game plays. And this is the only place it plays. Cold drinks. Let's go check in on Eddie and, and the little girl. Eddie? Oh. James, we met in the apartment building? Yeah, I remember, but... Uh... Are you alone here, Eddie? Uh, no. Her name? That's what she said. This town is full of monsters. How can you sit there and eat pizza? She said she was fine by herself. She said a fatso like me would just slow her down. Forget you. How can he just sit there and eat pizza? Like literally how? Like every piece of food we've seen here is rotted, yet somehow Eddie has found a freshly cooked pizza. How did you do this, Eddie? Who is that girl, anyhow? I don't know. All I know is her name. I swear. Yeah, he doesn't know who she is. I mean, neither does James. But Eddie is sitting right here. We can always, you know, she probably tried every time we can. Nope, still doesn't work. Well, we're in the Bolarama. However, there's, what, six lanes? Well, I know Silent Hill is a small town, but you, you'd you think that there would have to be more lanes to be legally considered a Bolarama. Like, this is like a half or a quarter of a, of a Rama at best. Let's chase that little girl. Did a little girl run out of here? Yeah, she was too fast for me. Aren't you gonna go after her? Eh, you know, maybe not. Where are you going? This isn't the way that little girl went. Maria insists that I chase the little girl. Okay. This very confused and anxious man who is looking for his dead wife somewhere in this town and is holding a gun is proceeding to chase the little girl that's trying to get away from him. Let's do this. Bolarama, welcome food, drink. I too welcome food and drink. Laura? 
Laura, if you can hear the sound of my gun, answer me. Uh, maybe she's not here. Well, she couldn't have gone this way. Sorry, Maria. Can we look at the newspapers here? No, I don't think we can. No. Sometimes James will comment on newspapers on the ground. Not those, though. This is locked. She went through there. Is there any other way? Yeah, there is. Right through there. Well, let's try it. Unless... James, you can't make it through there. I like how disappointed she sounds there. James, what James, what are you doing? You, James, no. It's no good. It's locked. It's very important to keep the three keys in separate places. All right, so we're inside the Heaven's Night. And Maria did have the keys, which wouldn't indicate that maybe she works here. Actually, that was the exit. Sorry, Maria. Whoop. There we go. A flower vase. There's nothing else of interest. James doesn't care about anything else here. Can't even look at these newspapers or magazine, whatever that is on the wall. Can't look at them. Liquor bottles. Don't need that right now. Oh, hold on. What did that say? Oh, no. There was a second thing that appeared. I don't, I'm not getting it again. There's nothing else of interest. Content. I missed the content. No time for that now, though. Because we're in paradise. Just a regular stage. Nothing strange about this. Normal table. Nothing unusual about this table. Heaven's Night... Very short, small place. We're just, we're through it. And that's it. Just like a little club. Hi, Maria. Just like in, out in the middle of here. And we can use that to get to the other side of that fence. Which apparently is where Laura went. We could not, because, I mean, couldn't have gone through here. Look at this. This is blocking the way. There's so much construction happening in Silent Hill. Just blocking everywhere. And I guess Laura would have... I guess she would have come out through there. Like that tiny little gap there is, I guess, how she, where she came out. And she would have come out here. Hold on, what does that say? No trespassing. Standard sign. And she would have had to have come down this way. Hold on. Permit perking. Permit perking only. No perking without a permit. Maria. Do you have a permit? Because I, I don't. No, We cannot perk here. We have to keep moving. Hold on, there's Laura. Over there! Well, if you look at the sign, it says... Brookhaven Hospital. Now, if we know about Silent Hill, hospitals... Not a good place. No, sir. Let's just... Maybe we can just leave her there. You don't want to go into a hospital in Silent Hill. It's a bad situation. You know what's going to happen in there. I 
have to go after her. I can't just leave. Maybe, well, maybe she'll be able to tell us something about Mary. So Eddie did. Eddie, when he was talking to Laura, did say, did ask her, "Did you find that person you're looking for? Did you say her name was Mary?" So Laura somehow knows about Mary, and Mary is be- so Mary's being looked for by two separate people. James is looking for Mary. Laura also looking for Mary. Here's a map. Let us take it. All right. Maria, what do we got? All right. We're on the first floor here. There's a basement. There is a second floor, a third floor, and a roof. Oh, and in the area that we're at right now, well, you might remember, it's Silent Hill. It's time to try to open some doors that have broken locks and draw all kinds of red lines all over this map. It's the best part. Yeah, that's right. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. More. So broken. Incredibly broken. I love how broken it all is. This is a horribly funded hospital. They cannot fix their doors. That's right. This one might open, actually. This one, that one doesn't. Is this one, uh, no, that, that one, okay, that one's just locked. This is the stairwell door. That one opens. Broken. 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 There we go. Okay, so the border is all broken. So many red lines. Let's do this, like, little cluster inside here. This one was actually open. There's, like, a, uh... A clipboard. It's about the patients. All right. Who's hospitalized here? Jack Davis. He has attempted suicide three times in the past for reasons unknown. Although he is a normally a model patient who follows doctors' and nurses' orders, he must be watched closely due to his past pattern of sudden and violent suicide attempts. Joseph Barkin. His illness seems to be rooted in the fact that he believes that he is guilty for causing his daughter's death. His symptoms suggest a psychotic break and paranoid delusions. Normally calm, but has a tendency towards violence when excited. Joshua Lewis. History of hospitalization as well as numerous assault, battery, and other violent offenses. He has a strong persecution complex and a tendency to solve things through violence. Extreme caution necessary. So only three patients at this hospital. It's they. Are, I guess that's you know a good thing that you know you don't you don't want to have like a need for more patients, right? But still, three patients. You can see why the hospital is underfunded. They're not looking after a whole lot of people here. Also, you might notice that as opposed to Alcamilla Hospital from the first game, uh, Brookhaven does appear to be a, a mental institution, as opposed to Alcamelia, which was a general hospital. So, difference between the hospitals that we're talking about here. Let us save a game. Save possible. Now saving. We have saved in the hospital office. I have gotten a health drink. Hey, Maria. Maria likes to teleport around in these rooms as we go back and forth. She'll do that. Something's written here. The potential for this illness exists in all people, and under the right circumstances, any man or woman would be driven like him to the other side. The other side, perhaps, may not be the best way to phrase it. After all, there is no wall between here and there. It lies on the border with reality and unreality intersect. It is a place both close and distant. Some say it isn't even an illness. I cannot agree with them. I'm a doctor, not a philosopher or even a psychiatrist. But sometimes I have to ask myself this question. It's true that to us his imaginings are nothing but the inventions of a busy mind, but to him there simply is no other reality. Furthermore, he is happy there. So why, I ask myself, why in the name of healing must we drag him painfully into the world of our own reality? Something else is written here. I got the key from Joseph. 
It's probably the key to that box. We got the purple bull key. Well, let's take a look at that key. A bull is drawn on it in purple. It doesn't look like a key. It's like kind kind of like a razor blade or something that's like has been chipped away. It's kind of weird looking. But um of the patients that this memo was talking about, um sounded like he was probably talking about Joseph Barkin who uh yeah, psychotic break and paranoid delusions. Probably that's who this doctor was talking about. Hi, Maria. Nothing else here to look at, I don't think. All right, let's try to open some more doors. That one's locked, not broken. Elevator doesn't move. Lock is broken. And locked. Normal locked. I think that's everything here. Yep, except the stairs. All right, first floor done, Maria. This is how you do it in Silent Hill. Examine every door and draw as many red lines as you can. Oh, actually, we can try to go down to the basement. The map did say there is a basement. Try to work our way around Maria. There, But no, there's no basement. Maria, take a look at this map. It clearly says there's a basement, Maria. But look at what is this. We have to go up to the second floor. Uh-oh. The sexy nurses have arrived. You know it's serious now. <laughs> nurses are a common sight in Silent Hill dungeons. Um, Silent Hill In Silent Hill 1, there are, like, hunchback nurses that had, like, parasites in them. You remember that. Uh, this is the introduction of the sexy nurses, which became sort of an iconic Silent Hill enemy. Oh, there's something on this typewriter. I can't use this typewriter. I'm not a Resident Evil protagonist. There's something in it, though. We can read the imprint on the carbon paper. Remember that? Like, if you wanted to, if you were typing something and you wanted to make a copy of it, you would use paper and carbon paper, I think is how it went. So you would, like, type two things at once. Like, that's even before my time. But that's something people did. I know it, I know the number of the box, 6367. I can't help him anymore. The button key doesn't scare me, so nobody can stop who I am. I don't know who I am is who I am is who I am is. Well... Maria, sounds like we just got some kind of password. I can still hear some sexy nurses walking around. Right, so the sexy nurses became sort of um, an iconic monster in Silent Hill. They would appear again in the movie. Even though they're was no reason for them to be sexy in the movie. They were. All right, let's look at this. The lapis eye key. An eye is carved into the top of the key. The iris part of made of a, uh, made of a lapis lazuli. Let's examine. There it is. That's pretty. So we got a key. Oh, let me reload my gun. Then in Silent Hill Homecoming, uh, the sexy nurses then returned again, even though once again, there was no reason for them to be sexy, yet they were. Hello. They say the reason that the nurses in Silent Hill 2 are sexy is because of James's um, sexual desires bubbling. I mean, he's Mary died three years ago. And James has got some un, he's got some needs that has not he's not been able to meet. So that's apparently why the nurses look like this. 
Time to wiggle. It's a wiggle party. The ele there's a cover over the elevator's call button. Cannot use it. This is locked. Cannot use... No, not locked. Lock is broken. Lock is broken. Lock is broken. This door is open. Hello. You know, Maria, I have, like, weapons. Do you want one? Like, I have weapons I'm not using right now. Well, it never comes up, I guess. <laughs> I think that's every door here. Yeah, it is. Alright, so let's go back out into that first area and try to open up these other doors. What's wrong? I just pricked myself. Are you okay? Yeah. You know, I would be pretty concerned if I pricked myself on that. It is a just it's a rusty needle. Probably should uh get that maybe just get that looked at. Um, once we're whole, once we're done here in Silent Hill, but we're taking it with us. Just a shotgun. We're taking it with us. This one won't open. Sexy poster right here. We could look at it. This locker won't open. The locker won't open. It won't open. This is no time to be looking at a stupid poster, but we want to look at the stupid poster. There's something inside the pocket of the jacket. Got the examination room key. Examination room is written on the tag. Might want to take a look at where that is. There are examining rooms on a few of the different floors, but if we want examination room on the first floor, there is a locked door in that initial cluster by the entrance labeled examination room. So we have found the key for that. Hello. If I mean this is not a nurse, maybe this is a patient. She's got a severe case of the four legs. Okay. Just just got to make sure we try all the doors and we draw all the red lines, even if we know which doors are the ones we need to go in. Let's go down to the first floor so we can take a look at this key that we got. So the examination room was on this side. Uh, this one, I believe. There we go. Hey, Maria. Medical rec records on the desk, nothing interesting, nothing we're concerned about. That, that one's broken, can't open it up. Got some shotgun shells. Mini fridge, let's raid it. Here's a memo hanging on the fridge. Food only! Do not store drugs in the lunch fridge. I store my ham sandwich in this fridge so many days and then I open it up and I find like urine samples or like syringes next to my ham sandwich stop doing that it's against hospital policy the important thing however is this particular one third floor patient wing hall 7335 let's remember that now it's unlocked 
All right, so now that we have that, we're on the other side of this. Let's try the third floor. You know, when I was in the hospital, I would hear this music start playing, and I was saying, Oh good, the nurse is coming by. It's how you know they're coming. That one's locked. That one goes to the special treatment room. Can't get in there right now. You know, it does make sense for there to be first aid kits all over a hospital. Alright, so let's go to this door over here. So this one is actually locked. Fortunately, we did get the password on the first floor. It was 7335. Mmm, so many doors to try, all packed in one place, so many locks to be broken. But this one is open. James. <coughs> Wait a minute. <coughs> I'm kind of tired. <sighs> it's just a hangover. You should rest. Mm. <clears throat> so comfy. I'm gonna go look for her. For Laura. I'll be back as soon as I can. Well, Maria's going to take a break. Doesn't look like a very inviting bed, but you know, when you're tired, anywhere looks good. And, uh, that might be a good time to save and take a little break ourselves. Let's come back in ten minutes and we'll continue on as James now continues investigating the hospital by himself because Maria's going to have a nap. Sometimes you just need a nap. It's okay. We should all be allowed to have a nap in the middle of the day. You're at work and you say, sorry, got to take a little nap right now. And like, I'll, I'll be able to work much better if I just can like get a little bit of sleep and just let it happen. That's what's happening right now. We'll be back in a few minutes. Right. So Maria is going to take a load off. We can talk to her. James, I want to ask you something. What if... What if you can't find Mary? What will you do? I haven't thought about that. That's a bad sign. You probably should consider what's going to happen if your dead wife is actually dead. I'll be okay soon. <coughs> did you find Laura? We did not find Laura. We've been standing here the whole time. Let's take... Got the roof key. Let's take a look at it. Key to the roof of the office wing. Alright, we can go up to the roof now. And we're just gonna leave... We're gonna leave Maria behind. You remember how I said, like, things you can do can add, like, points to getting certain endings? I think going back in here is one of those things. Like, James, I don't think we're going to get something... Yeah, we're not going to get something new. Yeah, that's the same thing. But I think going back in here does add points to a certain ending. Because if you go back in there to check on her, it indicates that James cares for Maria's well-being. 
There's green on the shower floor. Never a good sign. There's something stuck in the drainage pipe. Okay. Where's my canned juice? Just shove a can down there. The hole's too small. We can't get our hand inside. If we had some kind of long, narrow tool, maybe we could reach it. Nothing else in here. Lock's broken. This elevator's not working. That lock's broken. Oh, the camera's not working. There we go. Here we go. Here we are. Here we are. That lock's broken. Mattresses in front of this door. I can't do anything about that. That's impassable. Got a health drink. And a safe spot if we needed it. And in here, we find something strange. First on the wall, there's something written. Louise, I'll take care of you forever. It's my destiny. There's a box. There's a few locks on it. Someone wanted to really secure it. Well, we do have some keys. Like, we got this weird-looking key. We can use that on the main lock, which is like that vertical slit. We used a purple bull key on that. Unlock that. That's not what I wanted. I wanted this. There's also the lapis eye key. You can use that. And that'll get rid of the padlock. There we go. There are two uh, combination locks. And if we look at our memos, we did find one of them. Um, the carbon paper, I think. Yeah, 6367. This is the button key, it says on that. Which is this one over here. Well, that's three locks down. There's still one more, though. We don't have any other combinations. Nothing else we can do here. I guess we're just going to have to leave. But we did get the roof key. So that's our next hint on where to go. Let's head back to that stairwell. Well, if you look at this... Not much on the roof, just an elevator control room and a large area. But there is something here. It's a diary. May 9, rain. Stared out the window all day. Peaceful here, nothing to do. Still not allowed to go outside. May 10, still raining. Talked with the doctor a little. Would they have saved me if I didn't have a family to feed? I know I'm pathetic, weak. Not everyone can be strong. May 11. Rain again. The meds made me feel sick today. If I'm only better when I'm drugged, then who am I anyway? May 12. Rain as usual. I don't want to cause any more trouble for anyone, but I'm a bother either way. Can it really be such a sin to run instead of fight? Some people may say so, but they don't have to live in my shoes. It may be selfish, but it's what I want. It's too hard like this. It's just too hard. May 13. It's clear outside. The doctors told me I've been released, that I've got to go home. I... And we can see the line kind of scribbles from there. No more entries. What was a diary doing up on the roof? Well, if we look at our memos, this is probably talking about Jack Davis. He's attempted suicide three times in the past. So that's probably the patient it's talking about. 
It's got one of these fences that would be difficult to climb over. But, you know... Who knows what happened? Let's look at the elevator control room. Well, that lock's broken. We can't open that. This metal net is rusty and falling away. It looks like if we pushed hard enough, we could move it away. Did someone need a push? He was just here helping us out. That did actual damage. It's one of the few times I can think of where cutscene damage actually uh, does real damage. You don't see that too much in games. But yeah, we got smacked with his great knife and it almost killed us. So we're just going to heal up. Fortunately, we have a lot of healing items. We fell into the special treatment room, which is locked. So, I mean, he actually did help us out because now we can check this out. Also, yes, how did Pyramid Head sneak up on James? He is so slow and so loud, but never mind, I guess. Blood on the padded wall. Something's written on it. 3413. That number will be different every time you play the game. Turn, turn, turn the numbers. Better not forget them, so I'll write them down here. The other one. My secret name. So you can't just open up that last combination lock if you know the combination from a previous playthrough. It's ch It'll be different. It's not the same. Also, there's a note on here. Something's written on the wall. If Joseph looks calm, he can be taken out of his cell. So Joseph wrote that down. And uh, Joseph would be the third of the patients. Um, jo uh, no, the second of the patients. Joshua is the third one. He's the violent one. But this one's talking about Joseph. All right, we got the last combination. It's unlocked now. Let's head back over to that box. So, once again, it's a good thing we write these down in our memo book. Because we can just look it up. James also draws these down really well. I didn't, James has the ability to make these photographic renders in his notebook. It's a good thing for us. So, three, four, one, three. Well, he may have kept this safe four, Eva. Should have kept it safe five, Eva. There's nothing in there. Seems kind of anticlimactic. No, there's hair inside. Hold on. We got a piece of hair. Look, James went through a lot to open up this box. He's going to get something from it. It's long brown hair. It was in the box. There we go. We got some hair. What do we do with it? Well, now it's time for James to test his MacGyver skills. What do we do with the things that we have found? This one can actually be a little tricky because we have to now use um, uh, an option that we have not had to use in the game so far. We can pre go to the hair and go to combine. We haven't combined anything so far, but it's it's been there. If you've noticed, it's been there the whole time. We can combine with the bent needle. We got the elevator key. James is proud of himself that he figured that out. Nothing in there anymore. 
All right, hair plus bent needle gives us fishing hook, which gives us elevator key. Let's take a look at that key. Patient wing elevator is written on the tag. So these elevators, they've been locked up, but we have the key. Use the key. Where do we want to take this elevator? Well, um, if we could go down to the second floor, but we've already been in that hallway. You can see the red arrows down, down here. We've already tried out all these doors. In the first floor, however, we have not been in this wing because this door was locked. So this is unexplored territory. Let's go down to the first floor. And unlike basically everything else, uh, this actually has power. Give us those broken locks. Nope, that one's open. Got shotgun shells. Looking at something. All right, handgun bullets. There's some ammo. Not a vital room, but hey, we'll take the ammo. We're not too good for it. Some dolls. Laura? Huh? You know my name? Eddie told me. That big fat blabbermouth. How do you know about Mary? What's the big deal? Why can't you just tell me? You gonna yell at me if I don't? No, I won't. friends with Mary. We met at the hospital. It was last year. You liar! Laura, I... Fine, don't believe me! But last year, Mary was already... I'm sorry, Laura. Anyway, let's go. We can talk about this later. This is no place for a kid. There are all sorts of strange things around here. I can't believe you haven't even gotten a scratch on you. Why should I? Wait, wait! There's something I gotta get! Later, okay? But it's really important! What is it? A letter from Mary. Huh? I wanna go get it, is that okay? Yes, yes! Is it in there? Yeah, in the back. What are you doing, Laura? It's further back, in the desk. Laura! What are you doing? Open the door, Laura. Why should I? I'm a liar, right? Want me to open it? Huh? Huh? Do ya? What's the magic word? Laura? Okay. I guess it won't open it. I think I'll just leave you like this. You snotty little brat! Open up! You... You... Laura? You fucking...
Our hero being tricked by a small child. Okay, it's boss time. Let's get out our, our most powerful weapon so far is the shotgun. We are being attacked by feats. I mean, there are bodies attached to the feats. But if they grab me, they will try to choke me with their feats. Well, we might as well... Okay, I, I got one of them. It's going away. We might as well see us getting choked with the feats. Come on. There we go. I'm getting strangled by feats. There we go. Oh, gotta reload my gun. Oh, no. The feet are so powerful. And that's two. Okay, so a third one appears when the first two are down. I don't... I mean, maybe someone who knows more about the lore could say, but I always thought that maybe that these three guys represented the three patients that we've been reading about. That seems like that would make sense. Oh, no. Let me heal myself. Just take a quick health drink while being attacked by feet. suddenly someplace else we heard the sirens and now we're someplace else and unfortunately our map is now clean it's been reset there are no red lines and if we remember silent hill one when that happens it does mean that we've gone to someplace else what J what harry referred to as the other world let's save yeah I mean, you can, like look at this uh this rusty fence and, like, the weird fan behind it confirms we are now in the other world. It's the first time it's appeared in this game. The other world in this game is kind of different than the first game. It's still very dark, but while in the first game it was primarily made of rusted metal and was very reddish-brown... In Silent Hill 2, the other world is more moldy, damp, and green. It's also covered with, like, tarp everywhere. Dirty tarp. Oh, no. I'm f we heard a glass break. I also like during that scene with Laura, uh, when she insults James, she pauses for, for a few seconds, like she's trying to think of something to call him, and the worst, thick, the worst thing that she can think of is fart face. She had to think about that one. I think that's everything in this hallway. Yeah, let's get the elevator is the only thing we haven't tried. Well, this too. That lock's broken. All right, we're on the first floor. Let's try going up to the second. Also, something else that James noticed. He couldn't believe how Laura didn't have a scratch on her. And Laura seemed puzzled as to why James thought that there was danger. Danger. 
she was all, why should, why should I be, why should I be hurt? Why should I have a mark on me? She was, re she was like playing around. She was all carefree. Not like this wall with the hands on it that are reaching up in anguish. Not like that wall at all. Here's a piece of paper. Piece of paper on the bed. I was locked up inside the basement's basement. It was so small and dark and I was so afraid. I dropped my precious ring, but I will never, ever go back there. Someone dropped their ring. Anyway, let's take a look at what the hands are reaching up for. A battery? What else? Basement storeroom key. So the basement's basement. We got the key to it. There it is. But we also got this. It's an ordinary dry cell battery. It's the same type of battery that the flashlight uses. Well, we have not changed the battery in the flashlight. That's been lasting forever. The battery never ran out in the first game either. But we have the same kind of battery now that our flashlight takes. So maybe we should just remember, th remember that. Look at all this mold on the wall. Someone really does need to clean that. Hello. <laughs> Nothing vital in here. Just some ammo, just some health. Which we'll take, of course. You might also wonder, what happened to Maria? She was taking a nap in one of these rooms on the third floor, and then suddenly Otherworld happened, so you might wonder what's going on there. Uh, what happened with her? Maybe we should check out where she's sleeping. There's not much in this room, just like some tables and some chairs that are covered up. But there's also this refrigerator kind of lying on its side, on its back in the middle of the room. Kind of coffin-like, almost. It, there's something that looks like a refrigerator. What could it be? We'll try to open it. Hmm. Can't do it. Too heavy. This fridge has an immensely heavy door. We'll just have to remember it's there. Does he write it down? Yeah, he like draws a fridge in that room. So that's it's good to remember that. That's broken. Pardon. All right, so that's the second floor. Let's go up to the third. an interesting thing here. It's locked, but it's a very fancy door. There's like a painting on it. But the hands are like sculptures that come out of the door. Weird. Why would someone do this, you might ask? It's pretty. Like, the painting goes around the corner. And from this angle, you can see like the hands actually are sticking out of the door. Alright, let's head to the end of the hallway and take them one at a time. Broken. 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 Not broken. And bullets. And pool. Got some additional health. I think this is the first time we've seen this in the game. This was, of course, in Silent Hill 1 as well. It's the uh, most powerful of the healing items. And a note. Just some doodle, but something's written on it. She is an angel no one knows, only I can see the lady of the door. They cannot walk along her bridge of thread, they fall from the weight of their crimes. Like bloated and ugly corpses, their sin she devours them, sin and sinner alike, she saves me, she is an angel. 
someone really admires the, the door lady. Again, it's a nice painting. It has, like, some fancy arms coming out of it, so... You know, I think th I think th that door looks neat. It's pretty. Well, this is the room that Maria took a nap in. Maria's not here. Where could she have gone? Empty medicine bottles here. Is this what Maria was taking? Is Maria sick now, too? Be coincidence, wouldn't it? Mary dying of a disease and Maria looking exactly like her, also being sick with some mysterious ailment. Just a few items in here. On the map, this is called the storeroom. Let's just remember that, that this is the storeroom. Might be referenced a little bit later. <laughs> Doesn't seem like there's anything down here. All right. Well, there's an elevator, but we can try it, but, you know, no, no. But there is a door to the stairwell, and it's unlocked. Eh, you know, why don't we save? No reason not to, just takes a few seconds. We could try to go back up to the roof. I mean, we're in a another world now. Is it any different? It's locked, though. We cannot go up back out onto the roof. No way of knowing if Pyramid Head is still out there waiting for us. Just hiding out there in a corner, waiting for James to come back so he can knock him down again. Seems like something he'd do. This lock is broken. So was the first floor. I guess we're heading down into the basement. Which we weren't able to do before, but now we can. We unlocked it. Very small basement. We saw that one note where the guy said he lost his ring, but it wasn't in the basement. It was in the basement's basement. There's a shelf here. Nothing on it. But there are hands. Look at these hands on it. Red handprints. Let's move this shelf. There's a ladder going down. So let's head down into the basement's basement. James! Mary? Oh, Maria. It's you. I thought you were... Sorry. Anyway, I'm glad you're alive. Anyway? What do you mean, anyway? You don't sound very happy to see me. I was almost killed back there. Why didn't you try to save me? All you care about is that dead wife of yours. I've never been so scared in my whole life! You couldn't care less about me, could you? No, I just... Then stay with me! Don't ever leave me alone! You're supposed to take care of me! <laughs> so, what about Laura? Did you find her? Yeah, but she ran away. We've got to find her. You really seem to care about her. Do you know her? I've never met her before. I just feel sorry for her. She's all alone. And for some reason, I feel like it's up to me to protect her. Hmm, how strange. Why does Maria have such feelings for Laura? Also, L Maria, maybe going a bit too fast in this, uh, I don't know if I'd call this a relationship. 
maybe take it a little bit slower on that, on the whole you're supposed to protect me thing here. I that The dialogue in that scene always confused me a little bit, though, because it sounds like she said, I almost died back there. Why didn't you save me? It sounds like something happened that maybe we were originally supposed to see, but maybe, I don't know, it didn't actually, uh, in the final game, whatever that was didn't happen. Because we didn't see anything happen to her. Anyway, we're down in the basement's basement. Here's the precious ring. It's engraved with a picture of a spider. It's neat looking. But we're back with Maria, which means we could bump her like that. Don't do that. Loud rats here. All right, the only door that was open was third floor, so let's head back there. They might as well save again. Why not? So what can we do now that Maria is with us? Well, we did see that there was a refrigerator that was too heavy for James to open by himself. We have a second person with us now. Maybe we should head back there. That was on the second floor. All right, so to floor two we go. Question. That is probably the weirdest part of any Silent Hill game. 
just breaks out into a game show. Apropos of nothing. No, there's no more exposition as far as that goes as to why we got a game show there. We just did. Came in on James's radio as we were going down the elevator. For right now, let's pay attention to this refrigerator. You can't open it? Yeah. Maria, give me a hand here. Come on. You're supposed to be the big man around here. How's a little girl like me supposed to help? <clears throat> What's this? Not very cute, is it? Here, James. You take it. Mm, thanks. Big man and little girl power combined succeeded at opening the refrigerator and getting the lead ring. Lead is not a material that you really make jewelry out of. It's engraved with a disgusting, bloated face. It's not as pretty as the spider ring. I do like the tone that James starts to have uh, as he's talking with Maria. Now let's go up to the third floor. It's like for most of the game, James is very somber. But with uh, some of the dialogue with Maria, it does start to sound like he's starting to get a little bit of sense of humor back. Um, the voice said to go to the storeroom on the third floor when we wanted to give our answers to those uh, trivia questions. Let's go down there now. Okay, we were in this room before, but there's something new. This box. And on the top of the box are nine buttons. We got three columns, three rows. The rows are labeled Q1, Q2, Q3, and the columns are the answers. So each of the questions had three options. You have to remember what was said during the game show because it's not going to remind you. Do you remember what the questions and the answers were? Well, question one was, what is the name of the amusement park in Silent Hill? The options were Fantasyland, Silent Hill Amusement Park, or Lakeside Amusement Park. Well, this is something that would probably be in your mind more if you played the first game, because in that game, you went to Lakeside Amusement Park. It is on the map in this game, it's just that maybe you wouldn't have paid attention to it. The second question was, who was the murderer? Um, and we read about that murderer previously. Qu option one was Walter Sullivan. S option two was Scott Fairbanks. Option three was Eric Gein. And we did read that it was old Walt who was that murderer. The third question was uh, the street that will take you through Paleville up to Silent Hill. Uh, what is the name of it? Uh, was it Bachman Road? I forget what the second option one was. And then the third option was Nathan Avenue. Well, we've looked at the map a few times. I hope you do remember at this point that there is a big road on that map called Nathan Avenue. It is answer three. What do we get? Shotgun shells. Shotgun shells. Shotgun shells. Shotgun shells. Shotgun shells. Ampool and ampool. We got a lot. There's a bunch of stuff in there. If we fail that, I think we get, like, sprayed in the face with gas, and it does damage to us, if I remember that right. I think, I think that's what happens. You just take some damage. And I also think you don't get a second chance. Like, if you fail that, I don't think you can try to open the box again. So you only get the one shot at it. Anyway, we have two rings. Here is the door with the hands. What do you think we do with these rings? It seems pretty clear. How else would you unlock this door? Clearly, you put the rings on the hands. All right. So we're at the top on the third floor. Let's go down. Find another diary down here. Note on the ground, handwriting is hard to read. I took the director's key, the one to the museum. I hid it behind the praying woman when I, w I went out for the day trip. I picked it up, 
but I didn't. I did not steal it. I'm not a criminal. You know, that's a technicality. I think you didn't steal it, but you saw that he dropped it, and you took it. Now, we. It says that the key is to the museum, and we did go to the historical society before, and we found that the door was locked. So where is the key? He says that he hid it behind the praying woman. If you remember, we did see a statue of a woman at some point, and it did have like a little mound of dirt behind it. So maybe we should go check that out. Find that key. These doors are all locked. So let's head down into the basement, which for some reason, these stairs are a lot longer. That's probably nothing. Also, I feel like I should save the game. It... Pff slight chance of dying. Probably not. Well, who's that? Maria, it would really help if Maria was able to run faster. Yeah, she's getting, yeah, she's, Maria, hurry it up. Well, we made it down back to the first floor by the entrance of the hospital, but Maria didn't make it. All of these doors, all these broken locks, here for us to check again. But you know, somehow, we just don't get the joy from doing this that we used to. Not without Maria. I just don't even feel like drawing the red lines on the map anymore. Fortunately, though, the director's office is now unlocked. Let's take a look at his desk. He who is not bold enough to be stared at from across the abyss is not bold enough to stare into it himself. The truth can only be learned by marching forward. Follow the map. There's a letter and a wrench. We'll just draw that on our map by Gonzales. Letter wrench. And also, the statue at Rosewater Park, the key to the Silent Hill Historical Society. We copied them onto the map, and we took the hospital lobby key. And there goes Laura, walking away without a care in the world. There's an old book here about the history of Silent Hill. We can't seem to read it, though. If you remember, the entire reason we went into the hospital was because Maria wanted us to go chase after Laura. Well, there's Laura, and she's fine, but Maria's dead. So maybe it wasn't worthwhile to do that. Let's save the game. And the reason I wanted to save it before doing that is that Pyramid Head can kill Maria before you make it to the elevator. And yes, that will cause a game over. Not a cutscene death, but an actual death where you get a game over and then you have to reload your save. Because he's, he's doing real damage to her when that's happening. Not likely that she would have died, but it could happen. Well, we've made it 
to the end of the hospital. We have completed it, but Maria's dead. We couldn't protect her. Laura's run off. Once again, James could not do anything to help. He stands there with his shotgun, impotent. He calls out to Mary, asking what to do, wondering if Mary really is waiting for him. Or is this her way of taking? So even though, yeah, we're going to find Mary, the only thing we have left. Even though we should feel happy that we completed the hospital, which is a fairly, you know, long dungeon the first time you play through it, when you come out of it, you realize, oh, we actually didn't do anything. We went into the hospital with Maria to find Laura so we could protect her. And when we come out, Maria's dead. And Laura's fine. And apparently never needed protecting to begin with. So what was the point of doing any of that? James was not able to really do anything. We did learn something, though. And that is that we need to go to... Not, not that. We need to go to... Where is that? There it is. We need to go to Gonzales Mexican Restaurant so we can find the letter wrench. Then from there, we can head back to Rosewater Park so we can find that key, which is going to go... Not to that. Which is going to go to... The Silent Hill Historical Society. Why do we want to go there? Who knows? James is just kind of grasping at straws, trying to figure out where he needs to go. He wants to eventually get to the hotel. He is taking an extremely roundabout way of getting to that hotel. Like, there could not be a more indirect way of getting the, to the hotel. But he's slowly but surely getting there, and who knows how many people will have to die for James to get to that hotel. Because one person already has. That's it for tonight's stream of Silent Hill 2. We met Maria and watched her die. We uh, went through the hospital. We still have... I mean, we caught up for Laura for a little bit. But then she locked us in... James was outsmarted by a child. And he was locked in a room. So we still have to go after Laura and try to catch up with her. We also saw Eddie again. Eddie was eating a pizza. He seemed like he was doing all right. Well, that's it for tonight's stream. Uh, next time, we will get the letter wrench. And then we're going to go into the Historical Society, which I think, and I don't think it's a controversial thought, that the Historical Society is the best part of this game. So, that's what's going to be happening on the next Silent Hill 2 stream, we're going to be going through the Historical Society as James attempts to find his dead wife, who couldn't possibly be here waiting for him. But maybe? But couldn't be, but maybe. I'll see you next time for more Silent Hill 2.